Hello there, uh, this is Terry Britton and I'm making a quick recording to show how I use Cantabile 3, um, in my case the performer version, to do all of my recordings and how I also get the stems from Cantabile out, uh, they, because it records multi-track into single files, so how I get them out using Audacity and give the files all names. Now so that you see what I'm talking about here, I uh, Here's Audacity, the list of uh, files from a recent show, the, the Thursday show. And they've, each one's already got a name. They're already stereo files. They're not individual mono files. So, uh, so where there were stereo recordings, I've combined them into uh, stereo tracks and outputted them. So this is the output list. And in this case, it's nine files. I often have up to 14 uh, tracks depending on how many hardware uh, synths I use and microphones and whatnot but uh, so anyway these are this is the stems list and so it's easy to bring right into a, a DAW okay and uh, this is what uh, audacity looks like with these stems already combined using the oops here we go using the uh, make stereo track option and the name option that's all I've used in here okay so let's close this out because I'm about to use audacity and make a fresh copy and uh, so let's uh, look at the center and you'll see where the output ports are for these uh, these things I have output port there we go for hover as channel one and you see I have all of these various output ports here out channel one out channel two and so this is where you assign your VST instruments now the hardware instruments like my uh, WaveStation SR and the original WaveStation they're already assigned down at the uh, lower left in the ports to record area so there's my K5000 my ESQM so whenever you assign one of these, they automatically show up in the list. But in order to get these down here, these are extra ports used for the VST instruments. So this is how you get your VST instruments to record, is you add those, okay, to the various things. All right, now um, let's show immediately how I actually uh, make these output ports. So you go to Tools, Options, And you see I have several output ports and a scroll right on down. And you see these unassigned ones. There's your out channel one, out channel two, out channel three. And you note they're unassigned. So let's go ahead and make a new one. We'll add a stereo. Oops, I have to shrink this down a little bit. Here, let's do it like this. There we go. So let's add a stereo output port and we'll give it a name. Uh, we'll call this 12, I think. I don't even remember if that's consistent with my name in here. Oh, out channel 9. Okay, so just out. All right. So this is 12, out channel 12. And just, so now I've added 12. I don't bother doing anything to the left and right. I just hit close. And now you can see down here in the bottom left that I now have 12, which I've just created. Okay. All right. So, so that's how you make a, uh, a new one. So let's go ahead and uh, look at some finished files here. Let me uh, just back up here and take this over. Okay, now these are already done. And as you see, I have uh, these W64 ones. And they're over 4 gigs in size. This Alicia Keys, which we're about to do, is under 4. And so it shows up as a dot .wave. It's still a multi-track file. Okay, because WAVE can do multi-track. But it's, uh, it's under 4 gigs, so 
WAVE is good up to 4 gigabytes in size. After that, Cantabile conveniently switches over to using the Sony SoundForge um, version of WAVE, which is also multi-track, but handles files over 4 gigabytes in size, track numbers as, as large as you want. So we're going to go ahead and open up Alicia's keys here by right-clicking on it, and I'm going to open it with Audacity. And I just read the files directly from the original. And uh, let's go ahead and see what's happening. So it's now taking in all of these files. Now, the reason why I use Cantabile to do these recordings is because creating orchestration setups uh, across my seven keyboards, which is a whole bunch of keyboards. Oh, I, I have the wrong view set up here. But if you look at any of my videos, you'll see I'm surrounded by keyboards right now. And uh, so I can create setups across the keyboards very, very easily using this software. And I can change the entire orchestration setup with a button push all while I'm performing and recording. And so as a creativity tool, this is fantastic because I can bring up an orchestration setup that I know I like and switch over from keyboard to keyboard playing different parts and come up with whole complete sounding ideas. The, I, I actually was so impressed at how complete sounding they were that I go ahead and broadcast my, uh, my invention sessions, my improvisations, live to YouTube every single day because it keeps me creating new stuff every single day. And I get automatically get stems and I get the MIDI files as well in case I have some major mistakes in a piece that I want to, uh, to actually use. I have the MIDI files available to me. Okay, now here we now have Audacity has, has uh, brought up these things that are the tracks. And let's get this out of the way. And so now it's a matter of, uh, of naming them. So let me go ahead to my set list and bring up the set list for that day. And it's, by the way, Cantabile is running on a separate computer than the streaming recorder, the, the video recorder. So it's, it goes pretty smooth. There we go. All right, now I can, uh, let's see. There we are. So now I can see my track. Now I had a track and output assigned for the uh, Alicia's Keys and the Grandeur. And um, there's, there's that track. So you see I have some tracks that I'm not using, but let's just go ahead and do the combination first. So the way I've got this thing set up is I've got my, oh, and this is actually the piano set up. I'm just grabbing the main keyboard from the, uh, for the MIDI, and I'm recording four of these output channels, uh, and also the analog, which is the output to the show. So I'm getting that first track is the output for the show being captured already pre-mixed, so it's your composite. Then I have channels one, two, three, and four assigned. So here you have channel one is being used for Alicia's Keys. Channel two is being used for Grandeur from Native Instruments. Number three is being used for, uh, let's see, there it is, for the reverbs. Then I added two more. I added Addictive Keys, which is channel four, and independence which is channel five so in this actual in this actual performance this top one is the composite so let's go ahead and make stereo track so this isn't two mono tracks being output but a single stereo track and we'll go ahead and do that here as well make stereo track and in this particular show i didn't i only used alicia's keys so these extra tracks, I just had forgotten to turn them off because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them. So I can just close those little boxes and I can close that box. And this third one is the reverbs. All right, so now let's give them names so that they show up in my stems list correctly. 
for this since it's the composite I just take off that last item and type in composite oh oh I forgot a step I forgot a step well I'll show you that in a second you notice this name is is actually the name of the first track right now and because uh, I messed up and didn't didn't change the name didn't follow my own script here that I got written typed up here because I went and covered it over <laughs> the window smart me anyway uh, let's go ahead and change the name manually and uh, here we go so this is uh, music for unprepared piano composite and I got a T in there let me just copy that because I'm going to use it again oh. I'm really really uh, typing great and everything here yeah this is great you get to see how how completely fabulous I am at typing all right so there we go so now that's named and Alicia's keys I just I usually just rename as the instrument and since it's a file name you don't want to use things that aren't legal as file names and this one is the reverb so I'll just say reverb sometimes it's it's several reverbs in fact it always is on my shows for the piano pieces okay so now I have three tracks I simply go up here to file export multiple I pick a place for it to go I give it a just make a new folder I do this every day so uh, and I notice that this is running a little slow today I probably should have restarted the computer come on let's make a new folder please here we go okay and uh, this is the uh, music for unprepared episode 35 open her up select folder now I just hit export for each one notice I'm in 32-bit float PCM tracks and numbering before labels so uh, then this window shows up I just hit a okay three times and then it outputs the the uh, stuff so so this is fantastic because now I'm going to end up with three tracks that I can bring into the door or I can just bring in the composite track for mastering because the mix is already pretty much done but in the multi-track things I often will bring in all of my stems uh, into the DAW and I will make a new mix that's slightly different from the mix that I used in the original and then I'll master that mix but you do have the composite uh, in my case because I created a composite track that's the actual output from the show okay it's the exact same thing that went out to YouTube uh, but it's wonderful because you not only have that for mixing and mastering you can bring right into the DAW but you also get the MIDI record of your performance for any major corrections okay so there we have it we have the uh, the stems that were output we can close that out and close out audacity without saving you don't have to save the project because it's its work is done now let's uh, go ahead and show the um, show that renaming feature I was talking about yeah, let's uh, shrink this down here we go now you'll be able to see this what happens if you right click on the Cantabile thing and say rename episode 35 all right so there you type in the name and note what happens it changes there and it also changes the file names in your folder okay so uh, so that's that's a nice convenience that I just forgot to show er earlier so now I have in my stems I've got that music for unprepared piano and there's my three stems okay likewise here's the one I did before 
with the stems from the Vasily experimental show. And so it's nice because they're already named. If there were any instruments that were mono, they're already in here as mono tracks. And so you import them into your DAW as mono. And, uh, and all the stereo ones import as stereo, not as two mono tracks. So you don't have to deal with that. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to show you. So I hope that's uh, really interesting and I, that I showed you enough to actually get you to be able to use this. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know in the comments. I usually answer any kind of questions the same day. So, uh, and I don't mind answering questions at all. The next show, we'll bring these stems into a DAW next time. Uh, I'll be using Samplitude for that demonstration. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's the whole deal. All right. Thanks for watching and take care.